I call the honourable member for Fairfax. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would just reflect and say before I start my speech, it's sad that members of the government are not informed about what the real facts are. It's sad that they're relying on the leadership of the Treasurer and the Prime Minister to advise them what the facts are. And I would advise all members of the government to go to the OECD websites, go to the International Monetary Fund and see what the real situation is in relation to Australia's debt. Because there is no need at all for a debt levy. It's just to create a, a fear among Australians that uh, we're in a difficult position so the government can introduce a lot of retrospective situations which we don't need. Now, the true situation is, in the OECD, Australia is the third lowest debt nation. Our debt is about 12 per cent of our GDP, and the debt in the average advanced economies in the OECD is 73 per cent of their GDP. So we're five times better off. And maybe that's the reason why Australia is only one of 13 nations in the world that has a AAA credit rating. It's as simple as that. When the Treasurer and the Prime Minister made their promises before the election, they were aware of these things, and that's why they made the promise that there'd be no cuts to pensions, there'd be no changes with Medicare and all the rest of it. So as Australians, we don't want to sit in this place and talk rubbish and talk lies about what the real state of the economy is. There are tested, tried and proven means which are available to every member of the government on the OECD and on the IMF to say what our true position is. So why then doesn't the backbench and the government hold their leadership to account? Why don't they in the party room raise these uh, unrefutable facts and get the explanation from the Treasurer and see what he's got to say about it? And why does the Treasurer and the Prime Minister lie to the Australian people? And aren't they responsible for that? I joined the Liberal Party many years ago, 40 years ago, for I've been a Liberal National Party member. I was here in Canberra when we had the field of spare, the Gare affair. I've been through more elections than most of the members of the government would ever know. But I remember Bob Menzies as Prime Minister of this country, who stood for a Liberal Party that was a low taxing party. I remember Malcolm Fraser as Prime Minister of <coughs> Australia, who stood for low taxation, and John Howard. The Liberal Party in its history has believed in low taxation. So to bring in a debt levy, to tax anyone, to push our taxes higher, just as a, a, a sound that the Liberal Party is moving more and more to become a socialist party, no longer different for Australians, not providing any leadership for the business community of Australia. It's not about small government, it's about bigger government. That's why you need taxes. And this debt levy of 2 per cent, break, break, breaking a promise that the Liberal Party made to all Liberals of Australia that they wouldn't increase taxes is, is tantamount to a misrepresentation. And me, as a director of a company for many years, knows that if I lie to my shareholders when raising money or doing anything, I risk the uh, proposition of being charged for deceptive and misleading conduct. And you know, the Prime Minister, uh, who I supported very strongly in the 2010 election, went out there and made a lot of promises to the Australian people. For three years, he criticised Julia Gillard, or the former Prime Minister. For three years, he said that she broke one promise, which she did to the Australian people. And that was a basis of getting rid of the Labor Party. But now we've got a Prime Minister that hasn't broken one promise. He's probably broken 30 of them. Now, last weekend, I was approached by four members of my electorate, elderly women, aged between 70 and 83 years of age, that said to me that every month that they give their pension cheque to the nursing home where they live. And for 50 years, they said they didn't vote for me at the election. For 50 years, they've been loyal members of the a Liberal Party. They've voted for the Liberal Party at every election because they were loyal Liberals. Their husbands had fought for this nation in World War II and were now deceased. And they were placed in a nursing home. After they give their cheque to the nursing home, they're left with a, a sum of $15 a week, which the nursing home gives back to them. And every Friday, they get that money and they pool it together. They've got enough to buy a taxi, to go down with their concession cards and go to the movies. And sometimes they've got some other money that their family might give them so they can have a coffee or a chocolate. But there'll be no more coffee for, or no more chocolate for these women. They won't have an outing every week. Their lives will be diminished by the party that they've supported for 50 years, by the nation that their husbands fought for in the Second World War. They will lose all of that because of the betrayal of the Liberal Party, the Liberals of this nation. And they wonder why they'll get opposition in the Senate. They'll get more than that until they wake up to themselves. 
the Liberal Party should be a broad church. It should be representing all sections of society, one narrow view, not, not just one narrow view. It shouldn't be based upon lies and deceit and deception. The Liberal Party should be greater than that and stronger than that, and it has been for many years. It shouldn't be disrespectful for the Liberal leaders that have gone before, people like Bob Menzies, Malcolm Fraser and John Howard, that have real character. That's what they should be doing and caring about Australia. The Liberal Party is not a high-taxing party. How can they bring in a debt levy and tax us higher and higher again? Is this a return to the Whitlam area? They should wake up to themselves. And how can they lie to the Australian people? You know, in my state of Queensland— um, yep. The member for Fairfax, the word lying to these, accusing the Prime Minister and Treasurer of lying is unparliamentary, and I'd ask him to withdraw. Well, I withdraw that, terms. Madam Speaker. And you did it earlier as well. So. Well, I, was a, I, was a, I completely withdraw that, Madam Speaker. Thank you. But I think the Prime Minister was untruthful. He didn't tell the truth. And uh, if I was a director, as I said before, and I was untruthful to my shareholders <laughs> about what I would do and what money I'd raise, they'd have every right under Australian law to take action against me for misleading and deceptive conduct. And if I was found guilty, I'd be thrown in jail, as I should be. Should we expect any lower standard for the Prime Minister or the Treasurer or the government of the day? Shouldn't politics be about honesty? What sort of an example do we want to be to the children and the young people of Australia? When I left school and at 18, I was on unemployment benefits for about four and a half months. I didn't know what the future held for me. I wasn't capable. I didn't have the skills. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But I was able to get my act together because of the investment that the Australian people made in my life. And over the years, I was able to contribute millions of dollars in taxation to the government, employ thousands of people and provide billions of dollars of exports. And we want to stop these people being supported. Do we want to increase youth suicide? Is that what it's all about? Or do we just want to keep people starving and having to turn to crime? Is that the society that Bob Menzies envisaged when he founded the Liberal Party? Is that what he wants to do? Is that what the government wants to do? And this whole uh, gambit to, to deny the states for $80 billion of funding for hospitals and schools is just really designed to make the states not be able to function and have to sell their assets to others through lobbyists. You know, how could you not deny the community decent hospitals and decent schools based on a lie? In public expenditure for health, we spend around about 9 per cent of our GDP. Look at it up. It's on the OECD site. The United States, with their great health system, spends 15 per cent. So we spend about you know, nearly two-thirds of what they spend. In pensions, we pay 5 per cent of our GDP in pensions. The United States, a great socialist economy, pays 6 per cent of their GDP in pensions. So not only are we the lowest debt, uh, one of the lowest debt uh, countries in the OECD, our expenditure on social and public welfare is less than most of the countries in the OECD. Now, they're the facts. That's not debate. Go to the website. Look it up, I'll advise members of the government. Take it to your party room and say, Treasurer, Prime Minister, why do we say these untruths to the Australian people if we know that it's not false? Will that win us any votes? Will that get us back to the election? Is that good, responsible government? That's what we need to tell them. And secondly, the whole idea of politics for me, since I've become a member of this House, seems to be that in year one, regardless of what party you're from, you blame the other side for the mess they've left you in. You then say you've got to get control of as much money as you can because things are really bad when they're not. And in year two, you've got to maintain that position so that uh, you've got to keep, keep up the fight and get control of more and more funds, deny people more and more of a reasonable standard of living, so that in year three you can let the money go and win the election. How cynical is that? How, mem how many members of the government really know what the true figures are. I remember a conversation that I had with a National Party uh, senator back in uh, 1998, I think it was, maybe a bit earlier, when he said there were only two people, and it was when Paul Kitty was Prime Minister, there were only two people that knew anything about the economy in the parliament at that time, and that was John Stone, who had been the former Secretary of the Treasurer, and Paul Kitty. Everyone else didn't know anything. They just went along with what they were given to read, or they turned up on watch duty. But the Australian people are more important than that. We now live in the age of the internet, the age of information. 
All members of the government can go to the website of the OECD and see what the real situation is. They can go to the International Monetary Fund and see what the real situation is. So why don't they do it? Anyway, Madam Speaker, I would just say that when these measures get to the Senate, Palm United senators will just be voting against them. Thanks very much.